Wrestling fans, Boston Wrestling MWF Summer of 7 p.m. Seven nights a week has exploded online. Join the superstars and legends on Wrestling Insiders every night at 7 p.m. Spread the word. As first reported to our Boston Wrestling MWF family on Patreon, big things are happening as we wrap up our biggest spring ever and kick off our summer of 7 p.m. beginning Memorial Day night when brand new Wrestling Insider episodes premiere at 7 p.m. seven days per week. We also kick off our Make-A-Wish drive in high gear to help grant wishes to awesome kids that have been waiting over a year in many cases. After an extreme Saturday with New Jack and a demolition doubleheader with Axe, put the women and children to bed as fresh from the Shawn Michaels A&E biography, Marty Jannetty returns for a party with Marty triple header Friday, June 18th, Saturday, June 19th, and then joining us again for the WWE Hell in a Cell pay-per-view Sunday, June the 20th, taping episodes of Wrestling Insiders, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings. It's going to be a huge weekend that demands fan involvement. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information and pre-ordering option. Let's help keep wrestling legends working and great wrestling talk show content being produced. We can't do it without you. Help us explode into summer seven nights a week at 7 p.m. Right. We're going to talk about Abdullah the Butcher, a man you've known going all the way back to the 1970s, Tony, down in Georgia. Yes, you know, Abdullah the Butcher, I you, this is a true story. Uh, Tony Atlas and Tommy Wildfire Rich. We got our start with Abdullah the first night at the Atlanta City Auditorium in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I was wrestling under a mask, mm -hmm. and they called me Black Atlas. And uh, uh, I just did my match. I went back in the back, and Tommy Rich had just came in from Tennessee. So Ole Anderson, who was the booker at that time, one of the Minnesota record crew, Ole and Gene Anderson, they wanted Tommy to come in, put Abdullah over, go back to Tennessee. Where Tommy Rich, when he came through the door uh, at that time, the crowd went wild. I mean, he was a nice looking kid, had this long, blonde, silken hair, you know, and when he came to the ring, oh, every woman in the audience just fell right out. They were just so amazed with the to see, because wrestler was not known to be good looking in my day. Right. You know, we were big, really, really guys. We was not, you know, pretty boy. He was a pretty kid. So Abdullah got him, went to work on him, and all of a sudden that silky blonde hair turned bright red in the ring. So Ole Anderson come back and said, Tony, go and get Abdullah out of the ring, help Abdullah out of the ring. The fans are coming to the ring. They, we're going to have a riding on our hands. He said, they're going to the ring. So I have, I put my mask back on, but I forgot to tie it. You know, you tie your mask. Right, yep. So when I jump in the ring, Ab, I, I ran in the ring, Abdullah said, slam me. So I picked Abdullah up and slammed him, but because he was so massive, the mask came out with it. And then me and Tommy went on TV the next day, and uh, we formed this team called TNT. T for Tommy, T for Tony. And we wrestled for, we got, uh, we went four years, and me and Abdullah, we fought in every type of match in Japan, we fought in, in, in uh, uh, Puerto Rico, we fought all over Georgia, all over Florida. You, know, you can see pictures now of me and Abdullah in our battles there. You look at Tony Atlas versus uh, Abdullah the Butcher, there are many matches. There. And I guess our favorite matches, me and Abdullah, was mainly in Puerto Rico. Blood the the blood bath was in Puerto Rico. I mean, I got a picture at home, and I got a briefcase hitting Abdullah in the head uh, uh, with a briefcase. So, so we got our start that night, and from that day on, Tony Atlas was born, and Tommy Wildfire Rich was born, and, we, and Abdullah. It happened all in one night. Well, I tell you this, Tony. I've spoken to individuals off the record before, building up to some of our interviews, and they said they believe that Larry Shreve, Abdullah the Butcher. Uh, pulled the mask off intentionally, thinking it was going to help you. Do you believe that to be no, true? No, no, It no. was an accident. It was an accident, yeah. Because when I went to pick him up, his stomach, you got to realize that blew that big around now. You know, he couldn't reach back there to get my mask. Right. So when I picked him up, as I took him over for the slam, and then nobody, that blew never been slammed in his whole life. This is the first slam he ever took in his whole career. So Ole Anderson said, I want you to do it again on TV. So I had to slam him again on TBS. So, so twice, Abdullah took two slams his whole career. 
And Abdullah, he was not someone to shy away from the no, blade. No, he was 400 pounds at the I'm time. I'm talking about the blade, Tony. Oh, he liked no, to use no. the blade. He wore them on his fingers. Now, explain that. What Abdullah would do, he would take up the blade and put it on his finger. Mm -hmm. Put it right, right on his fingertip, and he put tape around it. But he would tape all fingers so you don't know which finger got the blade in it. And what do he just he hit you. He hit you with it. And sometimes he would do it himself. He go if there's not enough blood, he go you see him in the corner on some magical. Were you ever nervous knowing that he had the blades in his yes. fingertips? Yes. Yes. Did you because, ever get accidentally? Well, see, again? wrestling was different then than what it is now. Now let's say I'm in a ring uh with uh, one of the, that's Co Kofi Kingston. Okay. I'm in the ring with Coach Kofi Kingston, and all of a sudden he do something, and me and I get mad at him in the ring. Where back in the 70s and the 80s, I could beat him up. I just beat him up right there. Kick the piss out. I him. just kick the dog crap out of him right now. Now, uh, if I done that to Kofi Kingston, just just uh, beat him up in the ring and go beyond the strip, I'd be looking for a new job in the morning. Right. In the older days, they, they would never put anybody in a, in a uh, main event position unless they were sure that this person could take care of themselves in a regular occasion. Okay. So you had to be able to protect yourself in the ring. I got smart one time with Harley Race. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I wanted to try Harley Race because I hear how tough he was. If there's real army, if they. So I started to shoot with him a little bit. So I got him in a headlock and took him over and rear back on it just like this, you know, to get, to stretch his neck a little bit. And Harley just rolled his head over and took the nipple on my chest and put it between his two teeth and grounded him a little bit. And he said, if I bite off your nipple, you can't win no more of them contests, <laughs> now can't you? And I said, no, I can't. He said, well, then loosen up before you lose a piece of meat of your body. Harley was ready to, to take a bite out of crime, so to speak. They were going to bite my nipple off. Well, Abdullah was... And guys could do that back then. Right. Different you know, era. if you didn't go along like Sweet House, if you didn't go along, they would just take over in the ring and just beat the crap out of you and throw you out of, you know, that was it. And think... then when they get back to the back, the, the first day, the, they would tell the promoter, well, you know, I didn't want to do that, but, you know, the kid didn't want this, you know, you know, you, you know you're going to fuck me up. Then they would go chew you out and say, look, He's a veteran, you do what he said, and that's how he was. The World Wrestling Federation was live at the Springfield Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts, Saturday, June the 5th, 1999. In the opening contest, the Big Show beat Viscera in a body slam match. Billy Gunn with the win over Road Dog. WWF Hardcore Champion Al Snow retained the title over Hardcore Holly and Steve Blackman. WWF Intercontinental Champion Jeff Jarrett retained the title over The Godfather. WWF Tag Team Champions, the Acolytes, retained the titles over Edge and Christian. Kane defeated Gangrel. The Hardy Boys, victorious over Too Much. D'Lo Brown and Ivory beat Val Venus and Tori. And in the main event, The Rock with the win over the Big Boss Man. If you were in Springfield Live, share your memories in the comments section below. Use the link in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join Rotating Legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay per view, watch alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.